Hi everyone, it's Bretta Riches here from runforfoot.com and today I'm going to talk to you about how learning forefoot running in the Nike Freeze is not really a good idea for many reasons. One being the obvious and that the Nike Freeze, most of them are too thickly cushioned for beginners and I dislike the fact that the Nike Freeze are heavily marketed as a barefoot running shoe. I feel that the heel thickness of the freeze can still encourage heel strike running and this is one of the reasons why I like to tell new forefoot runners to try running barefoot first to develop a better forefoot strike. So a forefoot running beginner must, like I said, try running barefoot or in minimalist footwear that is zero dropped without a stacked heel to get a better impression as to how their foot is interacting with the ground so they can quickly correct their heel strike and land squarely on their forefoot. So the next time you're out shopping for forefoot running shoes, avoid the Nike Freeze because one study alluded to the fact that these shoes may disable the ability of a runner to acquire proper forefoot strike mechanics. And here's what the study found, and I'll link the study below. So the researchers compared the kinematics of barefoot runners with runners in the Nike Free 3.0. So just to note, the barefoot runners in the study were shod heel strike runners, and they had no experience with barefoot running. So the barefoot runners in the study were actually running barefoot for the very first time and they learned barefoot running or they ran barefoot independently without proper instruction. So the researchers did not inform them about heel strike running or forefoot strike running. They just told the runners to take off their shoes, run barefoot. The researchers measured their kinematic output. The researchers looked at how their foot interacted with the ground as compared to the runners that wore the Nike Free 3.0. So the researchers found that the runners who wore the Nike Free 3.0 had greater rear foot inversion at touchdown and during stance. What this means is that there was more rear foot motions oh, as compared to the barefoot runners. So the barefoot runners had more controlled pronation as compared to the Nike Free 3.0. And this is probably because if you look at the Nike Free 3.0, there is a considerable amount of compressible material. So when the foot strikes the ground, the foot is elevated and it needs to press through. And landing on this type of cushioning may create like an unstable surface. It's like running on a very, very squishy mat you might have more greater rear foot movements because the foot is trying to stable itself because the surface isn't stable itself. So the runners in the Nike Free 3.0 also displayed very similar biomechanics to heel strike running and that the runners showed more ankle dorsiflexion upon touchdown. And what dorsiflexion means is that the front of the foot, so the toes and the forefoot lifts up before the foot strikes the ground. And when the forefoot lips lifts up, this exposes the heel first. This increases the heel strike potential. So what the researchers found was the runners that wore the Nike Free 3.0, because their forefoot lifted up upon touchdown, so their ankle was in a dorsiflex position, they heel striked. So therefore they had a greater likelihood of not forefoot striking as compared to the barefoot runners who actually showed significantly less dorsiflexion. So they had less heel strike potential as compared to the Nike Free 3.0 runners. Does the Nike Free mimic barefoot conditions as the shoe is marketed? Conclusion of the study is that not really because the Nike, if the Nike Freeze did mimic barefoot conditions, then there would be less ankle dorsiflexion. So actually what had happened in the study is that the runners in the Nike Free landed closer to the heel as compared to the barefoot runners. So evidently in this study, the Nike Free 3.0 did a poor job at mimicking barefoot conditions because the Nike Free 3.0s promoted regular shod heel strike biomechanics. To correct for this, the researchers suggested that Nike should focus on a rounded heel shape design and making their running shoes without a heel flare and also a reduction in midsole height. So basically what the researchers are trying to say is that they, in order for the Nike Free to properly mimic barefoot conditions, they should be made 
more flatter with less heel flare and obviously overall the shoe should be closer to the ground so that the foot is in a better position to not heel straight. So this study confirms the fact that the Nike Free, although they're promoted as a barefoot running shoe, that they these shoes may not be the most forefoot running, beginner friendly running shoes because they still encourage heel strike biomechanics as compared to if you were to just run barefoot. For more information on the proper running shoes for forefoot running and what exactly should a forefoot running shoe look like, please head on over to my blog, runforefoot.com, where you will also find more information regarding barefoot running as well as the differences between heel strike and forefoot strike running. So have fun out there on the roads. Bye.